Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm Ukrainian-Canadian. Today is June 24th, 2022, and let's hit the latest news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So following the events yesterday where the Ukrainian staff said that we have officially received the Hammer systems, we now have the first officially documented usage of the M142 HIMARS in action by the Ukrainian Armed Forces. So really great news. We have received those systems and there's a video of it. So let's uh, let's look at it. So as you see here, there's uh, two of these systems being used by the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Again, the location is secret and they are being used at night in this video. So I assume that we're gonna be hitting them mostly in the evening or at night. Um, these are very effective systems. If you guys watched my previous video, I said that these have a range between 70 to 80 kilometers, at least the systems that the United States gave us. So these can hit the Russian position so much further than what the Russians are capable of um, hitting us with, because their systems have a maximum range of about 35 kilometers to 40 at most, whereas these ones can do double. So we're going to be able to hit them much further away. And that's great news. I think this is going to be game changing for the Ukrainian armed forces. And of course, when we receive 10 of those, unfortunately, not as many as we have been asking, but it's still a start. And we uh, have probably sent a few of these on the different fronts. I assume that there are a few of these in the Severodonetsk front, in the Kherson front, and perhaps in Kharkiv. So let's let's hope that these are going to be making a huge difference on the front lines. And I believe so because the fact is that they can hit so much further away and these are very effective. Their destruction, uh, destructive uh, capabilities are much better compared to any systems that the Russians have. So very, very excellent news for us. In other news as well, there is a quite comical video that came out yesterday of Russians accidentally hitting themselves while shooting their missiles from Alchevsk, which is in Luhansk. And let's look at the video. Boom. So I guess the missile refused the command and decided to boomerang back, back to Russia. <laughs> um, again, it's not funny in the sense that, yes, people are dying, but they're literally these Russian uh, artillery men are shooting from civilian positions. Like if you see, there is a housing right beside where they're shooting from. So they're covering themselves within civilian blocks in Alchevsk, which is pretty disgusting, in my opinion, uh, because they're uh, hoping that they're not going to be hit by Ukrainians because they're covering under civilians. So um, the missile decide to, decided to denazify Russians. In other news, um, this is actually interesting photos of Ukrainian soldiers uh, using inflatable boats to cross the Seversky Donetsk River between Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. Now, if you guys don't know, all the bridges linking those two cities have been blown up either by artillery, the Russians, missiles. So we cannot cross it effectively with uh, armored vehicles anymore. So essentially now we have resorted to boats. Um, and again, there have been news today that we are going to probably leave Severodonetsk uh, in the next few days and retreat to Lysychansk, which is an evident decision because it's a much better uh, ground to hold. We have higher position. The Russians are going to be struggling to cross the river. They're going to be struggling because, again, the higher position, the fortified city of Lysychansk is going to be a better ground to hold. And there's a few pictures of how in the last few weeks we have been crossing uh, the two cities from the river, on the river. Quite interesting. And last but not least, there is a video of an Aleutian 76 transport aircraft on fire before crashing in Ryazan. So let's look at the video. So this is a transport military aircraft uh, that is in the Russian armed uh, forces or air forces. 
Air Force, and uh, this one caught fire and it crashed in that city. And I believe it is one of the um, engines that went on fire. So as it went on fire, it obviously needed to do uh, an emergency landing, which it failed to do. And you can see it's impending crash. It actually took a very long time for it to crash. It's still not crashing, it's still flying. I don't think uh, there's a few survivors actually in this crash. Uh, some, some, I think there were nine crew members and four of them died and the rest uh, survived. You can see here. Uh, and there's another video, very short as well. That's the tail. So pretty, um, it's good news in the sense that the Russian army is using these transport aircraft, especially in the city of Melitopol in Ukraine. It has a big military uh, airport and the Russians are using that airport to transport ammunition and other weaponry uh, much faster than it would be if they were using railroads. So one less is good news for Ukraine as well. And let's look at the map real quick. There haven't been any major movements uh, as of today. Again, um, the latest news, see that was from uh, June 22nd. And the Russians took Kirske and Zolota. And they're pushing through now. They're pushing a little bit more. Uh, and now they have to, to take in uh, Loskutivka, Rai Oleksandrivka, and Mikolaevka. So they are trying to push through this road. Again, this is the uh, main road from Bakhmut uh, that goes to Lysychansk. We still have another road that we are using as a supply, um, but it's becoming dangerous for the Ukraine army. Although I'm very hopeful and confident that since we have the HIMAR systems, we can start hitting them in Archevsk, in Popasna, around here, Pervomaisk, uh, Donetsky, so the Russians are going to feel the heat too. And we're going to be able to hit them very deeply inside their territories that they're controlling. Um, again, not much has changed in Kherson. We're still trying to push through the main road that goes to Chernobyevka. And in Kharkiv, it's the same situation. The Russians are, are trying to push right now, again, without any success. And it's going to be elastic. I think that it's going to be back and forth. Um, so that's the situation, guys, for today. A lot of great news. Hopefully, the high Mars systems are going to be game changing for the next few days. Let's see. Let's see. I, I'm really hopeful that that's going to be uh, a game changing event for, for us to be able to hit Russians in much deeper positions where they hold stockpiles, artillery, reserves of men. And that's going to make him feel very uncomfortable. And that's going to destroy as well their confidence, which is very, very important. Their morale is already an all-time low. Right now, if they're going to start feeling and hearing stories of their positions being destroyed by these high mark systems, I mean, that's going to be huge. So let's hope and pray. And uh, yeah, it's great news. So... I'm wishing you guys a great day um, and I'll see you within the next few days with more news of um, what is happening in Ukraine. Thank you for listening and uh, see you soon, guys. Take care.